We are part of something bigger than ourselves. In the loneliest year that most of us have ever known, that is what I want you to remember. It has been more than six months now since I visited a friend's house, had Shabbat dinner with anyone outside of my immediate family, or gave any of you a hug at the Oneg after Shabbat services. It hadn't really hit me, to be honest, until I saw so many of you at Shofar on the Roof, our outdoor shofar blowing service. I was doing okay, and then when you got out of your cars and I saw you in person, in three dimensions, six feet away, it just took the wind out of me how much I missed you and how much I missed our community being together. This is the season of, our, of return, our liturgy tells us. And after six months of separation, I realize anew how returning to God and returning to our true selves cannot be separated from returning to other people. We cannot be together this Yom Kippur, but even over Zoom and live stream, the most important part of our service this evening is that we are together. These months have been lonely in so many different ways. For some of us, it has been lonely because we live alone and the necessities of quarantining have kept us from human touch, from dinner companions, from trips to visit loved ones and treasured friends, from chance encounters with friendly acquaintances. For some of us, it has been lonely as we realize more than ever just how much our classmates, colleagues, and the friends we used to see every day filled up our lives with laughter and connection. For some of us, it has been lonely because the overwhelming demands of life right now mean that we have let so many relationships and connections fall by the wayside. While we struggle just to keep our heads above water every day. Some of us are, lo are lonely and are mourning for a loved one. Some of us are lonely because we have spent this pandemic living with people who tr don't truly see us or understand us and their company only accentuates our loneliness. Psychologists who study loneliness have long documented how dangerously prevalent loneliness is in our society. When schools, offices, stores, and so many other places were closed, they braced for the worst, an epidemic of loneliness on top of the pandemic of COVID. But when they began to look at the data from their studies, something funny happened. They realized they were wrong. Loneliness had not significantly increased over the first few months of the pandemic. While the study excluded many important groups, including people without reliable internet and those who live in nursing homes, the overall picture was very different from what the psychologists expected. On average, people were no lonelier after several months of social distancing than they had been before the restrictions were put in place. How could that be? And how can we make sure that it stays the case through the rest of our isolation? One theory the psychologists who did the study offered is that the sense of solidarity we felt with the wider community has balanced out the loss of social connection. Going through the crisis of this pandemic made people feel more deeply connected with their neighbors. Instead of experiencing FOMO, fear of missing out, on the social plans and connections we might normally imagine that others were part of without including us, and instead of comparing our lives to the smiling photos we see of other people on social media, we knew that we were all going through an unprecedented challenge. The beginning of social isolation was difficult, but we were conscious that all of us were experiencing it. This awareness made us know we were part of something bigger than ourselves. And across the world, despite the fear and anxiety of this time, people have found ways to act on this feeling and to affirm our connections to each other. We've checked in our neighbors, delivered groceries to friends who couldn't safely go out. We taught each other how to use FaceTime and Zoom. The feeling of solidarity and the efforts we took to demonstrate our connection to each other were on average enough to counterbalance the effects of isolation. Did you cry a little when you heard about the people of Europe who were singing together from their balconies and the people in New York City who leaned out their windowsills and sat on their fire escapes, cheering to support frontline workers? Just when you thought a pandemic was enough to keep people shut up in their apartments, sequestered in their box in the sky, there goes the human spirit to show you how unconquerable it is. Even shut up in their homes, the Italians knew they were still part of the music, still part of the world's beauty. Even in their apartments, the New Yorkers knew they were still part of the city, part of the doctors and nurses 
the respiratory technicians and the hospital custodians, even forced to isolate, we knew we still belonged to each other. To me, the singing and the cheering from the balconies felt like the most gorgeous kind of prayer, the kind of prayer that rises up out of your heart on the wings of hope, a prayer that is not a reaching out to God, but a kind of response to the beauty and the mystery and the love in the world, even in the darkest times, that Judaism calls God. Or maybe better, it's not a response to the world, but a way of grabbing the world and shaking it, of stubbornly proclaiming and demanding love and unity and hope from a world in which they threaten to be absent. We too have a prayer that comes from the same impulse, although I don't think we usually think of it this way. Our services this Yom Kippur include many prayers and they fulfill different spiritual needs and impulses. Micha Mocha, a joyful exaltation. Avinu Malkenu, a plea from our deepest souls. Unatana Tokaf, a warning about our mortality to jilt us into changing how we live. Kaddish, a pledge to remember and honor those we have lost. And then there is the prayer that perhaps more than any other we are familiar with, the Shema, an affirmation of oneness and unity. Hear, O Israel, the eternal is our God, the eternal is one. Rabbi Harold Schulweis, of blessed memory, described the meaning of the Shema this way. Echad, oneness, is the, single, is the singular major attribute of God found in the Torah. The prayer does not say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is omnipotent, or the Lord is omniscient, or the Lord is perfect, or the Lord is eternal, but only, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Echad, he writes, not in the mathematical sense of one, as opposed to two, three, four, or five, but echad as oneness, as a Jewish belief in the great connection, the cosmic nexus, the moral binding that links us. To believe in achad is, is to sense that everything and everyone is connected, that we belong to each other, and that nothing or no one is isolated. This is why the Shema, the watchword of our faith that is, as it is sometimes called, is traditionally the last words spoken by martyrs and by ordinary people on their deathbed. To recite the Shema before death is to affirm that even death cannot break our faith in this unity. Even death cannot break this connection. Are you comfortable with this theological metaphor, the Jewish tradition of calling this oneness by the name God? Great. But I would guess that even many of you who do not consider yourself believers do still believe in Echad, in a connection among all human beings, among all living things, between life and the planet we make our home in. Is there some underlying oneness that is the source of all this connectedness, or perhaps the sum of this connection? That is how Rabbi Richard Levy of Blessed Memory taught us to think about God. To recite the Shema is to affirm, even when the world is fractured, the nature of our universe is that we are all connected on some fundamental level. We are part of something bigger than ourselves. This is the message we need to remember in our fractured world. Even before COVID, our world was so polarized, so segregated. The message of the Shema, the message of a unity that connects all of us despite our divisions is so crucially important if we are to find a way out of this isolation, if we want to heal what has divided us. I say this not out of some simplistic view, that the differences between our collecting views can be papered over. The differences of opinion today are real, and Judaism has always taught that real debates are important. Civility in and of itself is not the highest goal, but we must find ways to expand our circle of moral imagination, to include people whose life experiences and opinions are different from our own. The way forward to a strong and healthy American democracy and to a society where all people are valued and treated fairly is, as the journalist Masha Gessen, who writes about America and about her own experience in autocratic Russia, describes it, the belief that this can be a country of all its people. Our society needs to imagine a future where our lives are enriched by each other, and we need to start modeling what it looks like to see our fates as interwoven with each other. I want to share a gift with you now. 
At the end of this Kol Nidre service, the cantor and I always offer a blessing to the congregation. This year, in addition to that blessing, I am so grateful to be able to share the following blessings with you from more than a dozen of our neighbors of different faiths. Please listen to their words, feel our connections, and soak up their blessings. In this time of pain and division, May the coming year bring you blessings of joy, unity, and renewed vision. In this time of great anxiety, may the coming year bring you blessings of comfort and grace. Greetings, my sisters and brothers. In this time of adversity and uncertainty, may the coming new year bring you blessings of hope, healing, and joy. God bless you, and Shana Tova. In this time of change, may this coming year bring blessings of acceptance and adaptation, holding you in the light at this time. During this year of racial turmoil, let next year bring blessings of togetherness, understanding, and open hearts. In this time of social isolation, we send our warmest greetings and would like to share this Baha'i quote as a blessing in honor of Rosh Hashanah. So powerful is the light of unity that it can illuminate the whole earth. May the new year bring us all closer together and may we be better instruments of justice. During this time of anxiety and uncertainty, may the coming year bless you with peace in the faithful presence of the Almighty, the one who has promised to be with us now and always. Lashana Tova from your friends at Gladwin Presbyterian Church. In this time of distance and disconnect, may the coming year bring you the blessing of community and of love. Shana Tova, dear friends from Beth David. My name is David Tatkenhorst from St. Luke Church in Bryn Mawr. I have so much enjoyed getting to know your rabbi during the past year and having new connections between our congregations in this crazy mixed up time of discord and, and so much difficulty. I wish you blessings of peace health, and connection in the new year. God bless you. In this time of great uncertainty, may the new year bring the assurance that our connections, one faith community to another, are growing even stronger. So from your friends at Gladwin Presbyterian, Lishana Tova. My dear friends of Beth David, uh, Reverend Carolyn Cabin is here, pastor of Bethel Amy Church of Ardmore. And we pray that you will receive this blessing from us, uh, praying that God will continue to be with you, your family, the wondrous um, congregation of Beth David. Uh, we thank God for you and please receive this blessing.
to you. Let me speak life to you. You can depend on God to see you through. You can depend on me to pray for you. is the season of our return. God beckons us home, asking us to turn away from the paths that have led us astray and find the path forward to what will make this a good and a sweet new year. Can this be the year, despite our isolation, that we realize how connected we are? Can this be the year that even when our faces are covered by masks, we finally see each other fully? We are part of something bigger than ourselves. May our tshuva and our return help us to feel that connection and lead us to each other. <laughs> 